Welcome back to Shaw Spotlight. I'm here with Dr. Kennedy from the Thunder Bay Regional Health Sciences Center. Dr. Kennedy, can you tell us what the current situation of COVID-19 is at the hospital right now? At this point in time, Janice, we're in amazing shape. Uh, we have one positive COVID patient in hospital, not in the ICU anymore, as we've gone to the COVID floor. Uh, that person is quite stable. Uh, we only have 11 presumptives uh, that we're waiting for results to, to come back. And certainly, um, and we, at this point in time, I think we have six beds or six patients in beds on the 3A unit, which is our COVID unit. So all in all, we couldn't have asked for a, a better picture at, at this time. Uh, and in the community, uh, you know, we had 78 confirmed cases in the, in the community and the district of Thunder Bay. And we only have seven uh, active right now. The, all, the other ones have been resolved. So um, right now as, as Thunder Bay, we're in really, uh, really good position. And that doesn't give us the okay to um, break out for this weekend and, and go sort of uh, <laughs> have a, a lot of fun and a lot of sort of adventure. But you certainly can get out for some nice walks, keep your physical distancing, uh, and certainly enjoy the weekend, enjoy it a bit differently than you're used to, but it's still important that we prevent uh, any eruption of COVID-19 in the community. But we are in amazing shape just because the community has taken this seriously, and I believe they'll continue to take it seriously. So is there still a lot of COVID-19 testing going on? Uh, there's more and more testing going on at the hospital now, Janice. So right now the assessment numbers have, the, the assessment center numbers have declined a bit. I think they're probably averaging maybe 30 to 40, and at some point in time, we're at 70 or 80. But we're doing more when people come into the hospital, we're doing more of our inpatients. Uh, all our preoperative cases are being done prior. Uh, if you transfer anybody out to a vulnerable population, like a long-term care facility, or to an indigenous population, or to a homeless population, or to any population where there's vulnerability, we'll do a swab then too. So we're doing many more sort of what we call inpatient and outpatient swabs. Our numbers now are close close to 3,000 from the hospital perspective. And from a community perspective, we're, getting, we're closing on 6,000 testing done. But the numbers have dropped off in the community a bit. Do you know if they, I know they did two drive-through testing weekends. Do you know if they'll be doing that any again for the community? I've, I've got a teleconference with uh, Dr. DeMille today, but uh, after we last talked, uh, they don't have any immediate plans to do any more uh, sort of drive-through testing at this point in time because we are really in good uh, good standing as a community. But that'll be their decision. But at this point in time, they have no plans to do any further sort of community testing, drive-through testing. Okay. Now, people are very concerned with the getting being exposed to COVID-19. And I know with that, they may be too nervous or nervous to come to the hospital. Is it safe to come to go to emergency if you have a medical test? Is it safe for you to do that? And what kind of precautions should you be taking before you will come to the hospital? Well, well just as an example, uh, we have uh, probably performed over the past week um, well over 300 outpatient you know, swabs and inpatient swabs, and none have come back positive. So basically, we, we feel the hospital, when you come through the screening process, you're screened cr quite well. Uh, if you pass the screen, you come into the hospital, uh, and certainly all the precautions are taking place in the hospital. When you come into a high exposure, high risk zone, uh, all our staff are wearing PPE protection. We do uh, hope that all patients coming to the hospital will wear their own personal mask uh, so they prevent transmission to our healthcare workers. But if not, uh, we are well prepared and well protected uh, to take care of the healthcare needs. And, we do, we're still open for business. We need to be open for business because besides COVID-19, there's strokes happening, there's heart attacks happening, there's other procedures that need to be taken place to make sure we take care of the wellness of the population. So uh, from my perspective, if I had to come to the emergency, I would have no hesitation coming to the emergency uh, and because I think it's a very safe place to be. Everyone is wondering about a vaccine. Do you have any kind of information that you can give the community about the reality of that happening and when it could happen? The reality is it will happen. There's no doubt in my mind. We've got scientists around the world uh, working that, including here in Canada. And I'm quite optimistic. In fact, they've already got some test vaccines out there that they're testing uh, on uh, different population groups. 
Uh, but the biggest problem is mass production, okay, and, and looking at the safety profile of any vaccine. So I'm quite confident within the year. I don't, I don't think we're going to have it, you know, by sort of this year at all, but certainly early next year to mid next year, I think we'll have a vaccine uh, that will be very valuable to the population. Uh, and I think, uh, I think then we'll all feel a bit more comfortable. But knowing vaccines are never 100% uh, effective. So for the next, uh, uh, in the next foreseeable future, we're still going to have to take significant precautions, not only for coronavirus, but for any new virus that's going to erupt uh, over the next decade. Mm -hmm. Now, Nurses Week falls in the month of May, um, and I just found out that you started out as a nurse. <laughs> I, I, I did, and uh, so certainly it's uh, nurses uh, are such a proud profession, uh, a very educated, um, caring compassionate and uh, the work they do is not easy uh, i mean they, they 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 have challenges every single day but they built the the ability they have to problem solve uh, and to find their way through difficult problems is, is quite amazing and uh, it's all a team now it's, it's no longer nurses no longer physicians no longer aspiring technologists no longer housekeeping uh, no no longer portering Everybody needs to work at a team because the complexity of disease now is, is so overwhelming that the, the communication skills is so important for all of us. So no longer does the physician leads the team or the nurse leads the team or, you know, the RT leads the team. It's more just uh, individuals working. The patient leads the team. And, and certainly and all, the, all our sort of capacity goes to meet those patients' needs. And then, but the nurses... They are the key piece because they're, they're the ones that spend the most of the time with the patients, understanding their physical, their mental, uh, and their capacity. So I must say, uh, we, nurses, is, I was proud to be a nurse. Um, I'm just as proud to be a physician. Um, and I'm just a proud to be a citizen of Thunder Bay. But uh, certainly, uh, Nurses Week, uh, every single nurse deserves all the accolades that they get. And sometimes they don't get enough. And you've, in our conversation today, you just said how well we are doing at the Thunder Bay Regional Health Sciences Centre and a community as a whole. And a lot of that has to do with the staff and with the nursing staff and the physicians and everyone involved. Absolutely. Thank you so much for talking with us today, Dr. Kennedy. Okay, Janice. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe.